Almost without fail, whenever we post a picture of our rattlesnake fencing, somebody's going to chime in in the comments and say it can't possibly work because snakes can just climb over a block wall like a slug and they've seen it before. So we're going to explore that. Can rattlesnakes climb over a block wall? The answer is no, they can't. So stick with it and by the end you're going to be seeing things a lot like we are that a rattlesnake just cannot climb over your standard Arizona style backyard block wall and there are many easier explanations of why you may have thought otherwise. So we love snakes, that's kind of our whole thing, but we also understand why someone wouldn't want to have a rattlesnake in their yard. You're probably familiar with what we do with rattlesnake relocation, but maybe not as familiar with the more important second part of that equation, and that is rattlesnake fencing. Rattlesnake fencing, or snake fence, or snake proofing, as some people like to call it, is a method of creating a physical barrier that just prevents a rattlesnake from getting in. We do this by modifying existing fencing, gates, walls, and other structures with materials that are too high for a rattlesnake to climb over, or leaving no gap large enough for one to get in. This is based on principles that we have tested extensively with all sizes of rattlesnakes, and you can see some of that work in some of our other videos. It really works great and it is currently the only method of directly reducing or eliminating rattlesnakes in your backyard. But social media is social media and you know how that goes. <laughs> so we have our critics and fortunately we also have facts. We do get a lot of those comments on any post or mention of rattlesnake fencing where it's just adamantly stated that snake fencing can't be effective because the commenter saw a rattlesnake climbing straight up a block wall, straight up and over with their own eyes the way a slug does it. And we weren't there, so who were we to say what that person saw and didn't see? Well, we have a lot more than a basic understanding of the way that rattlesnakes move and how their body functions, enough to disprove it. And we test it a lot with all different sizes of rattlesnakes from all the different species possible that you can encounter in the Phoenix and Tucson areas. But just as importantly, we have enough evidence and experience working with the general public on this kind of interaction to know what's really going on here. So before we show you the experiment, let's look at some of the details that are pretty important. First, let's be clear. We are talking specifically about rattlesnakes, not the dozen or so other kinds of snakes that could be possible here each species has its own physical capabilities and limits, and just because one kind of snake can do something doesn't mean another one can. A coach whip or a gopher snake or a king snake, for example, they're common around here, and they climb really well. They can go straight up surfaces like stucco that the typical heavy body ground living rattlesnakes can't. That's why we call it rattlesnake fencing and not snake proofing. Those specifics matter when we're talking about safety matters like this. And if anybody comes to you with a product that they claim will keep out all snakes of all species all the time, they're either lying to you or dangerously naive about the product that they're selling. And I know this might seem like a trite dismissal of that critique, but let's be clear on what we're doing. Rattlesnakes are a potentially deadly venomous snake. While the others, they're just something you might not want to look at if you're scared of snakes. This doesn't mean that fear of snakes isn't real, but the two categories of an animal that can potentially hurt you versus one that you're just scared of, they're not in the same universe. And a fact that you might be surprised by, but we aren't, is that of all the comments and stories that someone's told me of a rattlesnake climbing over a wall over the years, every time that they actually have a photo of it, it wasn't a rattlesnake. Next, yes, rattlesnakes can and do climb to some degree. They have no problem getting up something like rough bark tree, a bush with a bunch of branches, anything easy to climb like that, a ledge, anything that lets them lift about half their body off the ground. But climbing a tree and belly crawling straight up a smooth steel wall like a slug are not the same thing. I mean, I can climb up a tree, you probably can too. This doesn't mean that you could just kind of ooze your way up a 40 foot block wall. I think a lot of people are surprised by this, and it comes from just some fundamental misunderstanding of how snakes work. I kind of put it in the same category as the beliefs that snakes are slimy or that reptiles aren't animals, in that idea that rattlesnakes can either just climb all things or none at all. So yeah, rattlesnakes can climb, they just can't climb everything. So now let's get into some testing. We're looking to recreate the situation that according to comments can't possibly contain any snake, let alone a rattlesnake. The experiment, 
create a standard Phoenix area backyard block wall, complete with some level of imperfection, a vertical to four 90 degree corners. The wall will be 32 inches high, which is four inches shorter than our recommended height of 36 inches or more that we use from our rattlesnake fencing that we learned about in a previous experiment. Then we're gonna put all the rattlesnake species that can be found in our service area inside one by one and film what happens. As long as the SD card and that camera lasts about 10 hours or so or overnight. If the snake can escape in that amount of time, we will consider it a fail. Here's what we'll be testing. An average sized adult Western diamondback rattlesnake, a pair of sub-adult Western diamondback rattlesnakes, a very big Southwestern speckled rattlesnake, a black-tailed rattlesnake, and a sidewinder, which is a type of rattlesnake, a tiger rattlesnake, and then a trio of tiny newborn rattlesnakes that are less than a week old. And then just for good measure, we're gonna check with a king snake and a big Sonoran gopher snake to see if they can do what a rattlesnake can't. The room is kept at a consistent 78 degrees Fahrenheit, and none of these snakes have been through similar trials. And no, these snakes had not been trained to behave in any particular way, if that would even be possible. And each of these videos may be up to 10 hours long, so we sped them up quite a bit, but you can still see what happens and we'll cut out some things like if it sits there for four hours so you don't have to watch it. But to show our work, all of it will be uploaded as a second video with just the source material. If you really need to see it, the link is in the description. Before we begin, remember that what we are testing is whether or not rattlesnakes, Arizona native rattlesnakes, have the ability to climb straight up the side of a block wall. First, let's watch what this big adult Western Diamondback rattlesnake does. Immediately, it's trying to escape. It's going from corner to corner, trying to get enough grip to get to the top and over. But as you can see, it gets close, but fails by a consistent measure each time, which is roughly at about 28 inches in height. It almost makes it, but it doesn't get its head over the top. Now imagine this wall is four inches higher, and you can see why we list our recommended minimum height at 36 inches. This is still far shy of the standard block wall height, which is about six feet. What you don't see here is an animal that's able to stick to the wall or just climb straight up and over the surface. It looks like it's able to find enough grip with the rough block surface to extend its reach a little bit, but not enough to take its body off the ground. Based on the comments that have prompted this video over years, the situation should be easy for a rattlesnake to climb, but it's just unable to escape. Eventually, it coils and goes to sleep, having wasted enough energy on the effort. Next, we'll try it again with two Western Diamondback rattlesnakes. Each of these is pretty skinny, being about a year old, but maybe that big snake is just too heavy to get out. So maybe these little ones will be able to crawl like a slug up and over. But no, the younger one of the two gets right to work, acting just like the adult did, testing all the corners and the aspects, trying to find every sufficiently textured surface, but not finding one. Eventually it takes a rest and the larger one gives it a shot, but it has the same issue. It tries every corner, not even trying the flat interior parts that people say they climb up and over before giving up and resting alongside the other one. Even though these snakes are much smaller than the first one, the amount of body that they're able to get off the ground with that strongly textured block wall is roughly the same as the adult. Now comes a very large Southwestern speckled rattlesnake. Maybe this one being a species more familiar with rocky steep habitat would have some success where the Diamondbacks failed. It gets right to work, crawling in circles, looking for a way out. It does seem to have a bit more trouble than the Diamondbacks in finding a tactic, which is kind of surprising. It doesn't spend much time trying to get up the corners. Instead, it seems to try to get up right up in the middle, but fails after just a few inches or just gives up. It's honestly a little bit surprising because I would have thought that a speckled rattlesnake would perhaps perform a little better than a Diamondback and this sort of thing, but it gets nowhere near as high or close to a safe as the first snake did, and it's unable to get out. Next up, an adult Mojave rattlesnake. This species is found in typically flat, sandy habitat where there's really not much to climb. So I am curious to see how this snake handles this kind of situation. 
And you're gonna have to excuse me running around the room in the background like a maniac too. It was maintenance day, so this snake had some company for the experiment. Eventually it does try to escape, but it doesn't seem to know where to even start. Someone predictably had a hard time that realizing that up is the way out and only really spent some of the time and that effort in the corners. Instead, it seems to be trying to get under the corners, and then when it does try to climb, it does get about as well as a speckled rattlesnake, but eventually it went to sleep, which is where it was the next morning. Now for another really good climbing rattlesnake, and in fact, it may be the best at climbing of the bunch. This is a black-tailed rattlesnake. They live in mountainous terrain and often climb trees and shrubs to hunt and thermoregulate. These can get up and down some pretty crazy services, so I'm really curious to see how this one does. But right off the bat, it protests the situation by pooping in the corner. So now we have to climb in there and get it, but maybe he's just losing some weight to help with that climb. Who knows? The snake seems confused at first, but eventually tries in the corners the same way that the diamondback did. It seems to do a little better, potentially, but still gives up and most of its body is just past the halfway mark. It's looking like rattlesnakes that are the best at climbing really end up just being about as good as the other. So it actually gives up earlier than the others, coiling up in the corner and waiting for the poop cleanup crew to sort things up. Now for another flat, sandy habitat rattlesnake, the Sonoran Sidewinder. These are little snakes, but they do climb into low bushes from time to time. And you can see right away why they call it a Sidewinder. That sidewinding motion is to help it move across the hot surfaces where it lives, kind of tiptoeing around without its full body in contact with the hot sand. You can think of it like going out at noon to get the mail on a summer day, and you know how that goes. The snake seems to be confused, but doesn't really figure out the whole corner climbing trip like the other ones did. I think it's interesting that the Western Diamondback still seems to be the best climber of the bunch, even though that none of these so far have been able to scale the block wall in the way that's described or even come close. Eventually the Sidewinder goes into like turbo mode and just cruises around the edges hoping something might be different with each pass. Sorry guy, you lose. Faster than the others, it coils in the corner and remains there until it came back in the building in the morning. And the last rattlesnake species in the area, a tiger rattlesnake. This is another rattlesnake that very much like the speckled rattlesnake is good at moving around rocky faces on steep terrain. I might expect this snake to have some serious climbing skills, but it seems to have a bit more trouble than the others. It's moving around slowly making more of these weird tiny movements and constantly keeping in contact with the ground. It doesn't seem to even realize that there's a climb as an option. Despite becoming quite active after a few rest periods, this snake never makes a serious attempt to get his body off the ground and just really had no chance to escape. And the last one with rattlesnakes. How about some tiny baby rattlesnakes that are just days old? They're the lightest of the possible options and they also haven't ever shed their skin yet. So maybe the surface is different. I also increased the humidity in the building and added a little bit of moisture to the ground where I put the three snakes. They are tiny little snakes and if anyone's gonna get out, it's gonna be them. So will their little lightweight bodies and unshed skins and humidity make a difference? Let's see what happens. The answer, of course, is not at all. These little snakes wander around looking for escape, don't put a lot of effort into climbing, and when they do, they don't get far. And that's it for the rattlesnakes that we're testing, which are, again, the targeted animals that we are talking about when we're talking about rattlesnake fencing. But just to compare and show how different types of snakes might be capable or how they behave, let's try it again, but with a couple of harmless common species. First up, a California king snake. These snakes are found really commonly where rattlesnakes are in Arizona and typically better at climbing all varieties of surfaces. Their bodies are comparatively slender and they can make use of even minor holds to scale walls, bricks, stucco, really anything that's rough enough to get a grip. This snake is about the same length as that first Western Diamondback rattlesnake that we tested that failed to escape, so maybe this harmless one can do better. The behavior here is different from the rattlesnakes. It seems to use the corners to get up and out, but also uses its nose to wedge into the small crevices and the spaces where it can. It even tries to get it right up in the center of crevices, pretty far up and turning back. The more you watch, the more you can really see different methods of articulation and behavior of working imperfections in the block to try to climb out. But in the end, even though king snakes are typically better at climbing than rattlesnakes are, it fails to escape. In the morning when I got back into the office, there was a very tired king snake resting at the bottom. But from what we saw, it also says that given more time, this snake probably would have been able to get out. 
And lastly, a very common snake that's also one of the most misidentified as a rattlesnake in Arizona, a large adult Sonoran gopher snake. This is the biggest of the snakes that we tested. It's also likely the best climber of the bunch. They can easily get into trees or any sufficiently rough surface. If someone in Arizona finds a snake in their attic, it's likely a gopher snake. They have very strong bodies and can manipulate them to take advantage of even the smallest rough spots. And just experiencing them from capturing hundreds and hundreds of them over the years, they seem to have a pretty advanced set of problem solving skills compared to the rattlesnake. So as a result, they are probably everywhere in the cities, even succeeding in entirely urbanized areas. If anything is gonna climb a wall, it's gonna be this snake. I really expected it to easily climb up, but it took a while. But once it really got to trying, it was out in no time. Even with their advanced climbing ability, this snake's size is the thing that made the difference. And make no mistake that this snake is larger than any rattlesnake that could possibly be found in the Phoenix and Tucson areas. This wall being about four inches shorter than our standards, this is not an indication that a rattlesnake is able to do this. And throughout the country, there's a lot of diversity in snake bodies and behaviors. Notably in the East, rat snakes and corn snakes are amazing climbers. If you've ever seen a picture or a video online of a snake working its way up through the spaces between bricks or climbing some crazy impossible surface, it was probably a rat snake or a corn snake. But again, this means absolutely nothing when trying to test the abilities of rattlesnakes. So if you're still not convinced, that's fine with me. I can say that what you've seen is not the extent of the testing, observation, and research that has gone into the development of rattlesnake fencing. Perhaps the best evidence of all this is the real world. Rattlesnake Solutions has completed thousands of rattlesnake fence installations all over the state for more than a decade. And the number of reported rattlesnakes that have climbed over a block wall to defeat it and have some sort of proof, zero. And look, all of this is not to say that in some rare, perfect conditions with the right humidity, the right snake, the right imperfections in the rock and a crevice going up the side, whatever, that we could ever guarantee that this could never happen. Remember, the claim is that this happens all the time and it wouldn't even stop a snake. We couldn't make that guarantee or that'd be irresponsible, but that is true for anything. I saw a video the other day where a horse stole a knife out of the belt of a farrier. It's still okay for equestrians to not worry about being knife attacked by horses. So at some point, forcefully contrived improbabilities just aren't useful unless the goal is for you to be that pedantic asterisk yourself. And on that, the last point I'm gonna make is this. Let's just pretend that rattlesnake physiology isn't what it is and that they can and do magically stick and just slug crawl straight up smooth surfaces and get into backyards. How often is that gonna happen? Is it one in a hundred times, one in a thousand times, 10 out of a hundred times? Let's say 20 out of a hundred times, let's go nuts. Let's say that in this fantasy situation, a properly installed rattlesnake fence still stopped 80% of rattlesnakes from getting into this imaginary backyard. So even if it only stopped most of the rattlesnakes that could get into a yard, that is still much better than having nothing at all. And fortunately, in all the testing that we have been able to do, all iterations of real world rattlesnake fences, we have not seen any kind of measurable failure like that. And that is it, a definitive look at a very specific topic. And honestly, maybe a little too much work to address something that we already know the answer for, but we realize sometimes it's necessary to show our work. So if an hour ago you were concerned about rattlesnakes and their ability to climb over a block wall because a random Facebook comment claims to have seen it happen, or if you're that random commenter, we are still waiting on that picture or video of that ever happening. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if there's any other aspect of this whole rattlesnake prevention topic that you wanna see us put to the test, let us know in the comments. Now I'm off to finally remove a bunch of concrete blocks out of my office. See ya.